Here we are. We're back at it again. Another episode of the Artistry of Podcast. Now, it's a few, man, I had a crazy, crazy few days, right? So, I'm usually off for Mondays. And, uh, the truck broke down. <clears throat> so... Uh, the guy who usually drives on Mondays, you know, so it's broke down. So then he had a late day, right? You get started in the way that the schedule is. We got like a whole bunch of deadlines. You got to deliver this by this time. You got to deliver that by that time, right? It's real tight and you just boom, boom, boom. You just on it. So I want to say that he didn't, he didn't get, maybe he probably didn't get it really on his, his first stop to around 11 or 12. You're supposed to really get there at 9, 9, 15. The best scenario is like 9, maybe 4 to 10 minutes after. So he wasn't really hitting it till 11, 12. So he was going to have a bad day. So they hit me up. I go in and, uh, you know, help him out. But what I was planning to do, I was planning on recording, which I probably changed the day. So right now it's released on um, Wednesday night, Thursday, right? Usually around midnight, Thursday morning. But um, I want to change that because, like, by the time I talk to you guys, my energy is like, yo, I'm just so tired. I've worked. I've been out since seven. I've been up since like six thirty. And um I don't get I don't get home till around seven thirty, eight o'clock. Eat something. <sighs> As you guys can hear, I'm yawning. <clears throat> Eat something and then I try to train and Tekken, and and then I hit the cast, right? So now I'm going to have to train after the podcast. So that means that this is not going to be a long one, right? So that's why I want to move. I want to go ahead and move the cast to Monday. So that's how I'm going to do it. So this Monday, because I'm not going to go in and, uh, you know, and knock it out, knock it out Monday. Do it good. Do it early, so that way I'm not yawning. <laughs> I got some energy. I'm feeling good, and bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so, but if I would have did it Monday, then I wouldn't get a chance to speak on the the uh, latest Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Which you guys can hear <clears throat> just in my voice, like it's just crazy, right? And I'm not gonna be speaking on this stuff, like because it's gonna happen. Another one, another incident is gonna happen maybe a month from now. And uh, and the crazy thing is, you had some kid. I think they say he was like 17, and he went out um, on like a vigilante spree, going around killing. I think he killed a few people and then he wounded some people. So like, yo dude is crazy. Let's go ahead and, uh, pull that up and see what we can find. I mean, that's just crazy, you know? And the, and the real crazy thing is that here you have a kid who, uh, let's go with, I really don't feel like doing any feedback. 
Sony opens pre-order registration for the PlayStation 5. Now, see, with that, I don't even know if what I'm going to do with that. Right? Ooh, now, here, Apple about to release seven iPads, eight Apple Watch Series 6 models. That I am... Um, I am a little concerned. Like, I, I want to know about that. Just because I was thinking about getting a watch. Like, I was going to get me an Apple Watch recently, um, like today or a few days ago. So, so that's cool. So, I definitely want to follow up on that. But let's check up on this uh this vigilante and see what we can uh, see what we can find out on this guy right um uh, let's see We have to there. And I'm trying to think of what um what town. Right? Cause this is this just happened, so it should have already been Vigilante Justice just can't think i think it was like man was it wisconsin all right i want to say that's where let's see if that'll at least get us close (laughs) all right All right, here we go. 17-year-old arrested after two killed during an unrest. So they are hunting for a possible vigilante. But see, just that, like, vigilante, like, why would they even call him a vigilante? Like... A vigilante is someone who takes the law into their own into their own hands. That's what I always thought it meant, right? So if that's the case, then why are they calling him a vigilante then? So he shot a black man. All right, so let's see. So a white seventeen-year-old police admirer has been arrested after killing. Two people during the third night of protest. So, come on, like, come on, dog. You just can't call it like he's he's not a vigilante. All right, two people killed in night attack carried out by a young white man <laughs> who was caught on a cell phone opening fire in the middle of the streets. And see, like, come on, man, ain't nobody had no weapons. Like nobody had no weapons. Like, yo, man, that's 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 what I'm talking about, man. Like, come on, man. Y'all got to be ready for this type of work. Like, you just do. You just do. You going out there and you you protesting. Like, you got to be ready for, for this type of stuff to pop off. Right? So they got shot to death and never was wounded. I saw it and they had him down, but they couldn't get control of the gun. And it's like, I think it was like maybe three or four had him down. But um, I get it. I get it. It's tough. You know, he's firing, and it's it's tough to get control. But like that's a that's the type of stuff you. I mean, you just gotta be ready for. You just can't wait for stuff like that to happen. You just can't. He'll be arrested soon. Like, come on, you admire the police? Like, yo, you want to be a cop? 
Well, now you're not. And and the thing, the biggest thing about this story is like, yo, you're 17. Like, come on, yo, you, you don't even understand life. You don't understand nothing. And now your life is pretty much over. Like, what you going to do? Are right, you going to join the the white supremacist in your t- in your local jail? And then what? You get out. You figure, all right, you went on like, this is like a hate. This is going to be a hate crime because you went out shooting black people. Right? You murdered two. You tried to murder three. Like, yo, you would have murdered as many as possible. So you're not getting out. You're not getting out. That's just crazy. And that's, I mean, that's just crazy. So I, I wouldn't have been able to talk about that, right? I really don't want to spend too much time on that. Just because, like, yo, this this type of shit happens every day. I woke up around 10 o'clock in the morning. I gave myself a stretch up, a morning yawning. <laughs> right? Like, yo, this stuff happens, and it's going to happen again. Right? But but what this is in like the whole protest is in um, reaction to the guy who's the black guy who got shot seven times in his back, which it's all about how you frame. Like so, the video that I saw, the guy was was walking from the passenger side, and he was walking around to the driver's side. Right, so this is the victim so it's so we got a black guy um he's walking from the passenger side so we don't know what happened before then what we see is maybe about just from my memory i want to say it was like at least five cops right so four to five cops it could be more i don't think it was three i don't think it was less so it had to have been like i said four to five possibly more cops they're all on the passenger side. He's on the passenger side, and he's walking to the driver's side. One officer, the lead officer, he has his gun drawn, right? So we don't even know why he has his gun drawn, right? And, and you guys remember just what I was talking about. Like, these clips, all of this stuff, all of this stuff is... um is is given to us in a certain way for a reason like they're not just doing oh this is all we got like no they edited the footage right to show us at this point so that they could get a certain reaction so that they can get a certain reaction from us like that's why we we come in at this video at this moment right i don't know why this cop had his his gun drawn but I know that if this guy is going to his car, right? Like, yo, come on, dog. Like, look, if I'm if I'm the police, if I'm the cop, like I said, we don't know why his gun was drawn. So if I'm the cop and I have my gun drawn and you are going to your car and you're, look, I don't know if you're about to turn around and open fire. Like, I don't know if you're about to just get in and, and just drive off. This is about to be. Uh, a high speed chase you could get in and try to uh mow us down right so i don't know what's going on so from the guy's standpoint the uh victim who got shot like yo man you you put things in a in a terrible situation and i get it man a lot of you soft guys out there be like i mean but he should have the right to just be able to get in the car and drive like yo man get the fuck out of here man are y'all serious man are y'all serious i I mean i know this is what y'all gonna be saying i just know it man he should have the right to walk away and to resist the rest and like like man now look look i understand i understand that look that guy shouldn't have opened up seven shots to the guy's back right they should have just took him down like come on if it's father y'all take him down right like, like he shouldn't even he shouldn't even have made it to to the driver's side but then what then people are going to be talking about police brutality 
right? So look, they're trying to walk them. They're trying to talk them down or whatever. But look, man, yo, you getting in that car? Like we don't know. Like yo, you're in a deadly weapon. Like yo, people have been ran over by people who who get in cars. Yo, they get in cars. They start trying to run you down, right? So, you know, look, I can't wait. I can't wait for you and see what you're going to do. And then what? We open up fire once you in there and you're trying to mow us down or what? You get in the car and you just start driving. Yo, man, y'all should chase him. You know? Like, so no matter what, it was going to be a bad situation. But he wouldn't have got shot seven times if y'all would have just rushed him, right? Took him down. And if it's five of y'all, look, each person on a limb. I Look, you get the left arm. I'm going to get the right arm. You get the left leg. Tony going to get the right leg. Boom. We're going to take him down, hold him down, put the cuffs on him. Right? Charge him with a re- re- resisting arrest. I mean, like, yo, you didn't have to shoot him. But at the same time, like, yo, man, once you get in that car, like, yo, it's just a bad situation. So, the cops just shouldn't have let him even get to his car. He's, look, take him down. Just don't put your knee on his neck. Like, yo, y'all don't have to, like, physically kill him. Like, don't beat him down. Just take him down. Restrain him. And uh, and book him or wh- whatever the, the next step would have been, right? Then we would have been complaining about that. But that's the thing. Like, yo, this is crazy. Like I said, I don't know why he... Why he even took the why, why the, the one officer had his gun drawn? Like that's just like when a person pull a gun out on you, <clears throat> they're pulling it out with the intention to kill you. Now let's say they don't they don't have no bullets, right? Because I've seen that I've, I've experienced people pull a gun out on you, but they don't have no bullets. So they want to scare you, right? But, like, yo, man, that's bad because of the things that can happen to you once you pull that gun out. <clears throat> like, yo, man, this is a, you, you, you're having a bad day. Like, yo, if you don't have no bullets, you pull that gun out, like, well, now this thing that escalated, right? It's time for the percolator. It's time for the percolator. It's time for the percolate. Like, look, man, it's like, yo, that's bad. That's just bad. And that's why, like, like I really, I've, I avoid, I really avoid guns. <clears throat> I really do. And, like, sometimes you just can't avoid it, right? You run up on some crazy dude, like, yo, you driving some guy, get some road rage. You know how you guys be. Y'all be on y'all road rage game. Boom. But but the person you doing your road rage with, he got a gun. Like, yo, that's the only reason why these people even participate in road in road rage. It's cause they got a gun. Like, yo, you you tell me you just that confident in your hands and that and that knuckle game? Like, nah, man. Nine times out of ten, a person is doing road rage with you, he got a gun. Now, let's say as a female, she just crazy. <laughs> and that's not saying that all women are crazy. But if a woman is doing road rage, like, and I've seen that, like, yo, they just crazy. Like, yo, like, yo, y'all live in this Mr. Rogers neighborhood type of world where you're going to just do some road rage and and then y'all just going to go about your own way. Like, yo, there's some real killers out there. So that's, that's crazy. I really didn't, like I said, like, yo, if this would have been done on Monday, Right. If I didn't have to worry, if this was done on Monday, I wouldn't even be talking about this. I would be talking about something else. What I'm going to talk about. (laughs) But I wanted to get that out there just because, I mean, this is like the latest thing. But like I said, this stuff is going to happen again. This stuff is going to happen again. So I'm I'm just not going to be talking about every incident. Look, this is what should have happened. This should have, could have, what else? I kept up so long. Like, nah, nah. Or, or from, because uh, I did an episode where I did my song. We're just cops and robbers. <laughs> uh, oh, man. We're just cops 
I'm gonna have to listen to it again because I haven't played it in so long. I I remember like do 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 we played the game. No one wanna walk away. You know, so I wrote the song Cops and Robbers. Um, I'm gonna have to listen to it so I can get the melody. Matter of fact, I might have to uh pull it up so that I can play it <laughs> in the beginning, right? Play it in the beginning of this. Put put the song in the beginning of this. But um it's this kind of triggered the whole MK Ultra. Right? And and this is this type of stuff that that's going on, like even with the um with the Black Lives Matter and just all these the protests, right? Like some people believe that this is actually um Russian warfare. And and um let's see, MK Ultra. I wanna say it's Ultra. I didn't know they had a it it might be I think it's called MK Ultra. Right? And um I'm I'm trying to pull it up. Yeah, yeah. So it's um MK Ultra and it's CIA my it was a CIA mind control program. And so like I said, some people believe that all of this stuff, all of these protests and just the bickering and the fighting amongst each other this is uh Russian warfare, right? This is what some people believe um because the whole idea is look, you um you destroy you destroy it from the inside. It's like a lightning attack. Lightning cooks you from the inside, cooks your insides. And some people believe that that's what's going on, right? Now MK Ultra like I said, it was a CIA mind control program. And people, some people, they believe that uh, Charles Manson was a part of it. And um, that this program also has something to do with um, President Kennedy's assassination and Martin Luther King's assassination. Because the guys who who were convicted of killing uh, JFK and the guy who was convicted of killing uh, Martin Luther King Jr. It's there are, there's evidence out that points to someone else that points to multiple and it points to a conspiracy theory type of thing. And I love conspiracy theories just like the next person. Like I really do. Um, I really do. And but most of the time I uh I don't believe like some of the some conspiracy theories I don't believe, right? Some of them I don't believe um but with the CIA doing mind control, I believe it because because all right, so so if this is a Russian attack, right? This is mind control and mind manipulation and party manipulation. We don't even know that it's going on. We don't even understand what's going on. This is the best way. This is, this is the best way to fight a war where it's just decaying from the inside and you're, you're, you're setting up these rallies. You'll have one group on this side and the other group right across the street. And then they, just so happen to see each other now they bickering and fighting and they have this hatred amongst each other. And ultimately what happens is they, they ultimately start looking to, okay, who can we blame? Right. And, and the politicians and just the government is going to get the blame. And then you have this, um, this takeover, right. Which like the type of stuff that we're seeing in Seattle, Right. So. So to touch on the MK Ultra, because like I said, this wasn't where the episode was going to go. But just seeing all of this stuff, like you got to ask yourself, why? Why is the sky blue? Why is water wet? Why did Judas 
grab the Romans while Jesus slept. Okay, we had look, look, we had to dip into our Wu Tang bag, right? Purge through, find a Jesus album, go to Ghostface's verse, <laughs> camouflage chameleon, ninja scale in your building. Okay, like look, we had to go in there for this episode because. This is going to happen again. And why are we even in control? Right? Are we even in control? When you go and you buy a bag of Doritos or you try that new Shaq's pepperoni, baroni, are you trying it because you? this is just what you want? Or are you trying it for some other reason? When you're getting that Kit Kat and, and you're mixing it with coffee, is this your idea? This is what you've thought? Yo, I need to mix this Kit Kat with the with the mocha latte, right? Is this your idea? Or is it or is it coming from somewhere else? This like these are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. And that's why I bring up the MK Ultra. Right. Because um, Charles Manson. Right. We, we're going to take it at Charles Manson. It actually, like I said, it goes it goes back. Um, this thing goes back. And and even alien, even alien sightings like it was even reported that. That um, I want to say that the I don't know if it was the Nazis. It It could have been. Could have been the mod, the Nazis, the Nazis, right? So they were cooking up propaganda, but this sounds more like American because um, because Americans in Hollywood, like we've we've always had to jump on um, movie, right? Just we've been at the frontier for uh, movies. We, we've we've been at the frontier, and I also I also want to speak on some of the. Um, the incorrect statements from last week that I made. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get to that as well. And I don't have that much time because like I said, I'm not, I still have to practice in my Tekken. Right. So hopefully we can cover all of these things. Um, but if not, then we'll just pick it back up. Right. We'll just pick it back up next week. So it's no thing. So MK ultra CIA mind control. Now Charles Manson, that's where we're going to take it from. Right. Started Charles Manson. Charles Manson was arrested before the murders. He was he was arrested and and he got into you know he got into trouble. But leading up like maybe a year to six months before the actual murders of uh which we all know him for, right? The brutal murders, like leading up to that, he got in trouble several times. He got arrested, but, but he got out, right? He was moved from, like they sent him to Mexico. He did some, something crazy down there. Like a lot of the uh, files were sealed and he, he was supposed to, you know, you look, you can't come back to Mexico, Right. They send him back to Mexico and he doesn't get arrested. Like his parole officer knew that he was in Mexico and, and didn't do anything. Right. So this is all the arrest and all of these things that he were, that he was getting in trouble for, but he never did any time. But like that suggests that he was a rat. Right. Usually like in today's standard, when a person goes to jail, like, yo, I know a guy, he went to jail, but then he was out maybe like within a month. It's like, yo, this this dude is singing. If you think you're lonely now, ooh yeah, wait until tonight. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, this guy is singing, right? Like, come on. Felt like I had to sneeze, but I was able to to hold it, hold it down. If you can't stand pain, better hold them. So 
that's what we 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 could assume that we could assume that with um with Manson, yo, you singing like yo, why why are you getting all these passes? They they just don't give out passes like that. They just don't give out passes. We know that the CIA had people uh, infiltrate the Black Panthers, right? We know this, but but when we talk about Manson, that that project that project was unique in the sense that they wanted a lot of a lot of the mind controlling techniques he used on his subjects, those girls that he had, he was using. So they were using like LSDs, they was using drugs, and he would pretend like he used them himself, but but he didn't and he just had them use it. And this is how they was getting the guys. They would lure them in with girls. And this was this was a CIA technique that they used prostitutes and they um used LSD on unsuspecting Johns and they just studied them, just watched them. Yo, drug these guys and let's see, let's see if they tell like, yo, are they telling secrets? Are they telling like, yo, what are they telling these girls? Right? So he used those same techniques, right? We're talking about the sixties. Right? I want to say that that happened in the sixties. I don't believe it happened in the seventies, but in this um internet age we need to uh we need to pull that up just because um yeah there we go let's pull it up <sighs> let's see yeah the late 60s <clears throat> So with him, people believe that the CIA had used him as an experiment. So he doesn't even know because he would have ratted him out by now. Right? So he died in 2017. The murders happened in the late 60s. Right? So he, he would have ratted him out. But but he truly believed he truly believed that 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 we was going to have this race war right they commit these murders they commit these murders and then they blame it on the black panthers and then uh the US government would be outraged the police would be outraged they would go after the black panthers and the black people would rally and join the Black Panthers and it would be this all out race war <clears throat> and um the blacks would win the race war. This is what he believed. The blacks would win the race war and take over the world, take over America. They would be in a bunker. They would be underground and when they arose they would um, be able to conquer the the black man, the black people, and and they would run the world. They were they would run the world. So that they were using black people as a weapon to destroy the government. Right? He believed this. Like he truly believed it. It's not the CIA said, "Look, act like you this and act like you that." Like no. So that's where we go back to, and this is just like the Mandarin, uh, the Maturian. Yeah, I think it's you pronounce it the the Mandarin candidate. I think it's the Maturian candidate. Man, I can't even think of the actual word. I know it's like man. I know it's not Mandarin because that's uh, a dialect. Uh, the Maturian, I think it's that the Maturian candidate or something like that. I'm sure Google will um, correct it for me.
Yeah, the mature Ian. Yeah, this is it. <clears throat> yeah, the mature Ian. Let's just pick up just this word by itself. Oh, so that's Chinese Indian. So, I mean, it's along the line of of um, Asia, right? So that's why I guess it was like running all in all together. But, but the whole idea of that, we're still talking about the same thing where you use these brainwashing techniques to brainwash a subject to where they truly believe in the act that they're doing. And what happens is then they come to, so it's like your brain has been uh, compartmentalized. You have this one side, you have this part in your brain, this, this new story, this, this uh, storyline is somewhere in your brain and it lives at the same time as your current reality. So in this compartmentalization or this, uh, compartment in your mind you believe let's say something like that like um uh, street fighter five was created by the devil right you believe that even though even though you know in reality that it was created just as a game a sequel to to the street fighter franchise and they're just trying to make money even though, so you believe that, but but there's a part of your mind where this storyline has been cooked up that the devil actually created Street Fighter Five, and that the, that none of the other Street Fighters that there is, that there are no Street Fighter One, Two, Three, and Four Ultras and Champion Editions and Turbos. That, that Street Fighter Five just came out on its own, created by the devil as a ploy to make you believe that the other sequels or the other prequels existed, but they didn't. Right. And this is his way of controlling you. It sounds real crazy, but. But they were successful. They were successful in in creating this and doing this. Right. So where you could uh, carry out a hit, be, be a sleeper cell. And then after the job was done, forget any type of recollection of what was going on. Right. You could forget any of that. And then boom, you just you don't know what's going on, and you like look, I, I don't know, kind of like some old Jason Bourne type stuff. Remember, I think it was three. I'm not sure if he forgets his if he loses his memory in all of them, but I want to say in three, he he lost he definitely lost his memory. He didn't know where he was. He didn't know, and then he could speak uh, German or you know I don't think it was the first one, but it, it could have been the first one. So it could have been the first one, but. But that's the type of story that uh, that runs on on this, right? So, so that's that's the idea. And this was before Manson, right? And I, I feel like Manson was the evolution of it, to where, like, boom, you really believe this stuff. But you're using techniques to manipulate people. You've learned these techniques. Right? He's using the same techniques that the CIA is using, right? Even when we talk about the Kiki thing, like that guy with the guy who's doing the main torture guy, um, he recorded all of this. Like the guy recorded all of this stuff. Let me get a drink. I guess I could just pause it, right? The next drink, I'll just pause this way. You guys don't have to just listen. Like, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> but that guy who tortured Kiki, you know, when we were exploring the first, um, the first Mexican cartel, right? The birth of the of the cartels. He was a CIA. So I mean, you have these techniques. And like I said, Manson was an evolution of the Maturian um, candidate. 
right? That was the first where you would commit a crime and then you would wake up and have no memory, have no recollect, no recollection. But Manson, he's actually the evolution to where you he commits the crime and he doesn't wake up. He he never wakes up. Right. If you if you really just think about it, because when we say um, when we say JFK and we say Martin Luther King. When we talk about them. You're framing and there's ambiguity. In the in the case, look, this is a two man hit. You have this guy who pleads guilty. And then later on, he says, yo, I didn't do it. And then he dies, right? His attorney dies. Like, yo, it's just suspect. Like, everybody who's involved die, like, in in a short amount of time. And this was before the Internet. Like, that type of stuff now is going gonna, is gonna to send red flags. And they knew that. They knew just from just from those hits, those early hits, they knew that, yo, man, we, we, no, no, we, we have to adjust, right? We have to adjust. We have to modify our techniques because, all right, if we're doing this stuff, it is two man teams. Even, uh, one of the, uh, maturian candidates, he raped a girl and then afterwards, I want to say maybe he raped her and he was trying to kill her, but he like came to and before he killed her. So he stopped and, you know, he didn't have a clue of what was going on. He, I don't know. Right. So in that instance, you, you, you never know. You never really can know. Uh, I, I think we would have to go. We have to go back into the, uh, to the torture days of antiquity. Right. We would have to go into those days to really just carve out the truth. Um, so, you know, we don't do those type of things anymore. So you, you just never know. You never know what a person truly knows and what a true what a person is aware of. But if we say that, OK, we acknowledge that the guy who killed Martin Luther King that it was it was more than just one shooter and that the gun and every just the evidence when you really examine the evidence it doesn't match right the bullet and the the um the spin doesn't match the gun it wasn't shot from that gun and for the bullet to to go out and come back in and it's like yo come on you know so um which the uh, Kennedy is like the magic bullet theory, which that it just, that never happened ever again. So this is just a one time thing. Right. So those type of things is like, okay, all right. All right. It was more than just one person. Right. It was more than one person. So you you don't want that. Right. I mean, if we're, if we're a government, that's dealing in espionage and mainly you're practicing on the P you're practicing on your own people so that you can, so that you can affect an outcome in different governments. That's the ultimately what you want. Right. And that's where Manson comes in because Manson boom, he did the murders, right? He, he didn't commit them himself, but he manipulated people into doing these murders. Right. And they believed, they believed what he was saying. He believed what he was saying. Does he feel like he was manipulated? Like, I'm sure if he felt like he was manipulated, he would have said it. Right. But he held on. He held on to his crazy stories. He held on to it. And he wanted to be a celebrity. Right. These type of people, they're susceptible to this type of stuff. Like that kid, the 17 year old, um, who admires the cops, right? So he's going to gun down some black people. Like, look, he I'm sure he wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be famous. 
Everybody wants to view the world. Dude. That was the jam, right? It's like, yo, that's just how it is. Especially in, in this day and age, in this culture, right? Now, boom, now it's about manipulation. Now, was he manipulated? No. Or, you know, who knows? But but these ideas and these techniques are out there, and they're, they, they've improved. So you figure, like, yo, you look at Manson, like, they've improved on that. So they they improved on the Maturian, and and then they improved on Manson to what we're seeing now. Right now with Manson and usually that type of stuff, you need one-on-one therapy and you need one-on-one interaction. So I'm sure that that they have changed their tactics and changed their strats to, to account for how things are going. And you say, well, you know, if you look at the, uh, the, uh, Nicaraguan, um, gun, and the war and the trade and, and Barry Seals and all of that. If you if you say if you, all right, if you look at all of that, like that wasn't clean. Right? So so how are we gonna make where the military is clean on this one side or the government is clean over here, but over here they're not, right? And I think the best way to really kind of see it is that just like with anything back in the day, it wasn't the the different departments and the different uh, parts of the system wasn't connected. They didn't talk and they didn't speak to each other. And that's still what you have. It's still a, a thing of secrecy, right? It's still a thing of secrecy. That's what you got. You got secrecy no matter what, right? Um, the fifth floor doesn't talk to the sixth floor and doesn't talk to the fourth floor. Right. It's the fifth floor, even though uh, communication amongst all of them. Would would improve communication between the whole building. Right. But the problem is if you're keeping things secret and you're let's say you're using leverage, you really don't know. We have an idea. We have a sense of. Some people, okay, who's going to rat and who's not? Because that's really going to be your biggest thing. Are they going to rat us out? We, we we really have to keep an eye on the rats. We have to keep an eye on the rats. Because a lot of people, they're not built for this. They don't have the fortitude. They don't have the cojones <laughs> to keep moving forward. So once we understand that, we say, okay, all right. Then we're we're at a point where we're like, well, all right. All right. Uh, this person is not ready for, um, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> right? So with the whole black lives, right, with the, with the seven shots to the back, the people aren't ready to find out that this guy had a gun. The people, or let's say, why this guy pulled out his gun, right? People aren't ready for that, so we're not going to tell them that. We're just going to go ahead and bring it right in where he has the gun out, and they're all following. They're following him to the to the driver's side, right? They're following him to the driver's side. So. Boom, now you got secrecy. Look, these people, they don't know. So this is is a reoccurring theme in the past. And what's happening now is people are wanting to know. People are craving knowledge, wanting to know how things work, wanting to know every piece of the system. And... It just wasn't built on that. Like when you're talking about espionage, like people don't have a clue of what's really going on. They don't. They don't have a clue. Like they don't. They, and and it goes back to what I said. I mean, are you really in control? 
of your decisions, of your desires, of your actions. And I really wasn't even trying to go here today, but just this, this latest thing was like, yo, man, what is, what is going on behind the scenes? What's really going on? <clears throat> and you got to know that there is something really going on. And, and I remember I used to be a grant manager and you, you can always follow the money. Like you can always follow the money. Like if I ever got accused for anything, like, look, I want y'all to do a full, I want, I want the FBI. I want the IRS, right? Because the IRS, look, it's, it's the numbers. The numbers don't lie. We will be able to find where the money (laughs) is coming and going. We can find it, right? So that's what I, I would, I would ask for a full audit. I would demand a full audit. An audit would would clear my name. An audit would tell the truth <clears throat> of I, every dime of mine it can be accounted for. Every dime, every dime can be accounted for. <laughs> right. So the money. You, we can still follow the money. We can still follow the money and see what is truly going on, but we will have to know where to look. Right? That's the main thing. All right, where are we looking? We're talking about following the money. Where are we looking? But if we knew where to look, like the money would tell us the story. It would tell us what is going on and why. Because they're not just doing stuff for no reason. It's all it's all money. Right? It's all money. So what I wanted to speak on about last week, because what I said um about about the slave trade, it would have been accurate if America was the first to 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 do slavery, but America wasn't right. America wasn't, it was the British. Uh, They, they were the ones who, um, who really made the slave trade. And, and, you know, they were the ones who, who set it up. So with that in mind, what you're going to have now that you didn't have in my story is you're going to have the British running the slave trade. Like that's what you're going to have now with the British running the slave trade and the British there. So then we have America is just a, a colony of the British, right? And the, the Look, America, they're not going to like the British. They're not going to like the taxes. They're not going to like not having representation, right? So then they're not going to like that. And then they're sending over, they're sending slaves over to do work. And we're talking about the South, right? And they had slaves in the North as well. And they just didn't have, it wasn't a big business. But but the wealthy still had slaves doing odd jobs, doing housework, right? It just wasn't as big business in the North, but they still were, they still had slaves, right? It just, it just um, stopped in the North before it stopped in the South, right? But it wasn't big business like you, it wasn't farm, you didn't have like slave farms in the North. But when you have slaves, that's coming from, you know, and, and when I say coming from the British, meaning that the British are the ones supplying, right? They have the whole route and 
they have the ports and I think one of the biggest ports was in one of the islands. I can't think if it was like Puerto Rico or whatever island, but, but they had, you know, it was running, it was running all over and you can see the trace, the trace of it in, um, in the people. <laughs> you look at South America, uh, Brazil was, was big business. Um, Jamaica, um, what's the place that they say? I know black, the, it's not Puerto Rican, but it's man, I can't think of the name of <clears throat> I know black them, <laughs> right? <laughs> Look, man, you are black, man. So uh it was it was big business, but but you had that resentment. And that's what I didn't have in my in my, you know, utopian <laughs> even though I mean it's just it's just no way around. It's just never gonna be utopian, right? But I still stand by um, slavery in in its essence. When we go back 6,000, 10,000 years ago, slavery was, was mercy because, because if it wasn't that, then it was just death, right? Which we, we spoke about in our hypothetical um, encounter, right? If look, if all of these people, if they don't, really serve a means t- for my idea, right? If they don't serve my idea, well then let's just go ahead and kill them all. Right. So that's, that's what you got a lot. And even, um, they didn't say this in the book, but, um, Africans came to this country before uh, Europeans. They came to this country before Europeans, but, what I believe and people, they, they really didn't speak on this, but I believe that they were, they were murdered. I believe that they were killed. Um, I believe that they were killed when they, when they came here. Right. The, uh, the natives like, yo man, they was, they was, uh, they were some wild boys. <laughs> like They, uh, they was definitely some vicious guys. I mean, but, it's all about just what you what you believe and just for your your reality right if you if you only know war then that's what you expect and um they were definitely led to believe that they were vicious and brutal but um hey i mean they they lost out to the germs right germs eradicated and it's just so hard to even imagine that germs could kill so many people <clears throat> right that it could kill so many but if they didn't have any immunity and they didn't have time to even build it and you getting these big boy viruses now right white people coming over after they didn't after they survive the bubonic plague right they survive the plague <laughs> so they're coming over with this type of um these type of diseases and it just it just ravaged the uh the native population it just decimated them so i mean it's uh it's really crazy to imagine right um it's like man that's just crazy but but yeah, that's that's what I didn't speak on. I didn't speak on it in my hypothetical utopian slavery um, plantation, right? I didn't account for big business. What I what I was speaking on was a mom and pop shop because big business you don't know. So if so if the slaves are coming from from the British, right? They're coming from England. Well, these slaves really don't even know their master. So they have this secondhand master. And what we know about any job is people, most of the, most of the time, people don't like their job. Like, people don't like their job. People hate their job. No matter what it is. No matter what the job is, people hate their job. That's just most of the time. That's what you're going to get most of the time. People hating their job. So... And people feeling like the people at the top are the ones that's making all of the money. That's really getting rich. So 
with that in mind, you're going to be building animosity towards the slaves. And so all of the brutal, the brutality and the violence and just the rapes and all of that, like all of that is going to happen. Right. Why? Because you don't have someone protecting these slaves. You have, I really don't care. <clears throat> right? That's what you're going to have. You're not going to have someone who cares. Like, All right, I'm not going to let you come in my house and take my TV. But if I have, you know, 50 TVs on the West Coast. Right? <clears throat> I have 50 TVs on the West Coast. I have um, a shipment headed to Brazil. I really don't care. Look, um, if now if each shipment keeps getting picked off every time, well, then now it's going to be a problem. But how many, how many shipments, how many TVs are in there? Right. So that's the thing. So you, you're not going to have a, a sense of, yo, I'm not going to let you do these things. So by the time individuals start to make and build wealth, right. Like they are maybe two to three generations deep. You know, so. So, yeah. So with that being said, then uh, the model that I talked about, like it's going to be incorrect because um, the British, they were the main ones who who set, who established, who started and established the slave trade. And they're so far away from the problem and they don't care. Look, man, just show me the money. I really don't care what y'all do. And you have these people who have resentment and just, you know, so it's just bad. And you, it's just going to be, um, it's just going to be horrible. And it's going to be the horrors that we know, um, happened. So I wanted to say that because, because I, um, I listened back to it and, and I had to, you know, I had to be critical of it. I had to be critical. And then I had to, I had to, had to admit it as well. Right. Because what I was thinking was, was small time and you can't think small time because, because slavery wasn't small time. It was big time. Right. It was big time. Even in the very, so in the very beginning, that's happening. But you're going to have somebody who has money from something else, which we have the um, the what is the, the aristocratic family, the royal family. They're going to be the ones who um, gain great wealth off of slavery. Right. The queens and the kings of England and princes. Um, what's the queen's name? Elizabeth. I don't I don't know if she was. It, it was like a, there was a few Elizabeth, so I'm sure she, uh, I'm sure Queen Elizabeth uh, was alive during that time, right? There was some uh, Queen Elizabeth, right, <laughs> during the uh, fourteen, the fourteen hundreds, right? Where we are, fourteen ninety two, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, okay? So be foot in, right? They getting it in. Uh, 1500s like look it's go time especially once you know that all of this stuff is open so we got the 1500s 1600s man it's look all right spanish they can't really really compete like all right they they establish but um but we know what language the uh the majority of this country speaks and it's it's for a reason because those were the ones that's the language that won right because that's the language that had the military backing and then just the the dominance in the alliances whereas in Canada boom you have the french so so yeah i i definitely want to speak on that and uh you just never know what's going to happen between now and the next lesson uh the lesson the next episode so we'll just kind of keep our ears to the streets. Um, <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not going to worry about 
people answering and calling and just interacting. Like, yo, that just takes time, right? It takes time. You never know what people want to speak on. Um, so you just can't rush it. You just can't. You just can't rush it. You just got to keep doing what you're doing. You got to just look. What if nobody's listening? What if no one makes it to the end <clears throat> to even hear um, to hear what you just said? Then what? It's like, yo, all right, boom, next, right? You you just keep going. You keep living life, and and you get these ideas out for you. You you do this for you, and if no one listens, then hey, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. So that's how you got to approach this. Now, do I believe that I have a a formula? Do I understand the people who are successful at podcasting like the ones that you see? Now, there are some people that, that are successful that you don't see. Right. But the ones that I see, the ones that I see, like I have an idea of why they're in the position that they're in. And I know what I would need to get into that position. Right. But then we have to. But the people that I listen to are all comedians. I'm not a comedian. Like, I think I'm funny. Only like, I don't think I'm funny on here. I may say a few things here and there to make you laugh. But um, but I don't I don't think I'm funny like that. But I do acknowledge that I am funny, but I'm I'm not a comedian. Like, I've I've never gotten on stage and told jokes. And I don't know how jokes are put together. Um, so I would have to listen. I would have to find someone like me and listen to, you know, listen to him. So I would have to find the most successful person like me and kind of look at their story. But like I said, I mean, I listen to comedians. So, you know, I have an idea of why they are where they are. Right. But that doesn't help me with me. But. I think that helps me with just being myself because if I listen to somebody who was close to me, then I would say, Oh man, well they're not doing this and they're not talking about this and la la la. Right. So I would have hesitation. I would stop myself, but because I don't listen to anybody that's like me, then I don't, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's right. I just, boom, look, this is what I feel. This is how I'm choosing to do it. (laughs) So look, that's just, this is how it is. So that's the good thing about it. That's the good thing about it. So now we're going so we're going to stop it there so that I can um, get get a little bit of time um, practicing teching. And I wanted to talk um, about. I probably saved this for next week, but. Um, talk about either sex. As you can see, I'm I'm tired. Um, sex or just um, relationships. So we'll see. Um, and you know, I definitely had some ideas on the, the what I could, how I could approach it. So we'll see. We'll definitely see how that goes. But um, that's it. That's the that's the episode. If you guys, if you would like to. Um, if you type in the artistry of podcast or if you type in Bo Miles, the artistry of podcast on YouTube, you'll find this episode on YouTube and you can leave a comment there and I'll read the comment. Um, if you guys want to give me some, some a review, if you would like to review the podcast, please uh, review it wherever you, um, wherever you listen to your, to your podcast, wherever you're listening to this, you can review it there. And I do have a number that hasn't changed, but look, I mean, as I get more in action, but you can't, you can't force growth. Growth happens and and it's growing, right? We are growing. Um, but just like anything, you, you can't see it. You can't see it. You can only look back and say, oh, all right, I remember when I didn't have one person. Now I have seven. Right. So so you can only see it um, when you pass as you pass the experience. Do you understand the experience? OK, that was that experience. So. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. Definitely. I'm 
cooking up a book, um, trying to get some of this ink work. So definitely have a few things going on in the pipe works, but uh, in the pipeline. So you guys have a good one. Have a good week. Uh, have be safe, as safe as you can be. And uh, Reese's PCCCCs.